Welcome everybody to the season opener of the 2023 Monster Energy Supercross race. And I cannot believe it, Justin. Good friend joined today, Justin Brayton, 2018 Supercross champion, Daytona. Man, oh boy. Yep. And you are not. Yep, 20 year <laughs> veteran, and it's pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, this is the 80th AMA Supercross held here at this event. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's wild. You mentioned that earlier. That's. That's hard to believe. Uh, 50th year, right, of of, uh, yeah. of Supercross in um, Anaheim One. There's there's no better, no more anticipation for any race day than today. So I'm excited to be here as a fan. Yeah, I think we had some stats. We were looking at them over earlier, and it's crazy. They've had you know 42 years of racing at this stadium location. Many times they had multiple events. Anaheim One, Two, and Three, and One, Two. You know, we've had them all. And uh, we've had, I mean, talk about winning, who, who's won the most here. There isn't one king of Anaheim. There's actually four kings of Anaheim. We have, you know, McGrath, of course, eight-time winning here. And then we also have Carmichael Stewart and Reed have all won eight times here at this track. But Mother Nature was brutal this week in California. And you can see right over here at the starting line where we're starting off here, this is a split start again. We haven't seen this since, what, Glendale? Glendale. And you yeah. dropped the gate on yeah. that. Tell me what it's yeah. like being in a split start. Well, we were just looking at it, and I really think tonight, with this split start, your heat race finish is going to be more important than ever because that's your gate pick for the main event. So um, we're standing on the outside, so, so it's split. There's going to be 11 guys on the inside, 11 guys on the outside. And if you look right here, you've got to go around Check. a loop section. One, two, if you're out here on the outside, check, which is a check, huge one, two, disadvantage in my opinion. So you're going to have to go another 20 or 30 feet, right, Brock? So, um, and on the inside, we can walk down there if you want. But look, yeah, Mother Nature, like Brock said. Check, one, two, but check. In saying that, the dirt works too. an amazing one, job. Check. Yeah, this, uh, the track is just, it was just it terrible. It was complete slop two speed. days ago. Weren't even able to have press day on, uh, on, on Friday. Normally they let yeah, the riders you. ride a little bit. They were not able to do that, but they did a really good job. And speaking of riders here, they're coming for their first real view of the track too. So as you take off here, for Anaheim standards, fairly long start, 288 feet to that first corner. Guys like Jesse checking it out right here. He's like, man, he knows what he wants. He knows automatically that's where he's going to go to the inside. As Justin said, don't really want to be on the outside. You can think you got the greatest jump in the world out there as we head down the start. You're, you're probably going down there about halfway looking over. I mean, I, I'm going to grab the whole shot, and then all of a sudden you look to the check, inside, and check. what do you got? You got eight other guys on the inside of you. So, check, check. you know, you better, you better get a really good start if you're going to plan on getting the whole shot from that outside. So, Justin, when you see this dirt right here, you can kind of see it's a typical California adobe. Again, very high speed down to the first corner. Uh, the track itself is a reasonably long track, too. It's over 2,000 feet. So I'm thinking it's going to be probably mid-50s uh, for the lap times here. Uh, a little, little bit quicker probably than the previous Anaheim's, but they all tend to be right around that area. So. Yeah, and I will say as a rider, right now, You've, you've seen a lot of relief on a lot of riders' faces already. This is our first time seeing the track, and there's been a lot of speculation, right? Is it going to be really muddy? Is it, are the transitions going to be bad? Are the, what are the whoops like? So there's a lot of riders already coming out. You can see, like, oh, the track's good. Dirt, Dirtworks crew did a great job. So uh, we're going to see some really, really good racing. But um, you're going to have spots like this, though, that... Like right here. I got my old mud boots on right here because I anticipated this. Walking to the track was treacherous, but on the track, not too bad, but there is some soft spots where Justin was talking about. Having the track covered during the week when they had the really hard rains is a good thing, keeps the faces of the jump firm, but what ends up happening is the transitions, as we see right down here in this pocket, that's where the tarps are joined together, water leaks, and you know how water is if you have a roof leak on your house or whatever it is. It, it always seems to find that crack, and you can see even over here to the left, where the mud is very, very deep. You get off the edge of the track, your whole moto could come to an end, your heat race could come to an end, and you could be down to literally almost getting stuck there. So, Justin, what's your thoughts? I mean, obviously you want to be first, but... A little yeah. bit more on the condition, Brock. Think about it, we've got 11 hours of sunshine, really, today. So yeah. yep. even if there's some sections uh, that are going to be a little bit wet right now, I think by tonight, by race time, it's going to be an amazing track. Yeah, uh, what they've done in 24 hours to this track, from yeah. what we saw last night, I actually came down here about 8 o'clock last night. I'm always interested in the California weather in general because 
might get that sunshine fairly dry this time of year. Not quite Santa Ana conditions with low humidity, but it, it is pretty low humidity. But as the evening comes in, that coastal air comes in, the dew points drop, and then you really get some moisture on the track. So if there is any hard pack sections and they get that moisture on, they become just like grease. Coming through this rhythm here, right here, probably single and a or if you get enough run, you probably will you'll double this and then you think you jump on and off here? Yeah, typically with any tabletop, you want to jump onto the tabletop if you can, but then if you go onto this tabletop, you're going to go off and single into the turn, which which isn't great. So uh, your rhythm is going to be different as well around the first turn on the start rather than doing the whole track. So you're going to want to look at two different options here. Uh, yep. But it looks like if you jump off this table, you could jump into the turn, which we call that obviously a quad. and. Um, I think that'll that'll end up being the line. Yep. So right here behind on the jump with us, Pierce Brown. We got Colt Nichols. Yes. Oh, Colt, how's it going, man? What do you think of the track here? This should suck in my ass. Little right. soft pockets, but other than that, we're looking uh, looking better than anticipated. So good yeah, luck on the uh, Team Honda HRC 450 tonight, man. All right, yeah, Colt. Yeah, that's pretty exciting for him to get that ride there. Kind of vacated Ken Roxon bike and. Uh, he took it over, and I, I know he's loving it, and I know the Honda guys like having his experience helping set up the bike. Right yeah, so. This is a tough one. There's going to be a few pockets like this, but this is what you want to avoid. This is exactly what you want to avoid. Go over the tabletop and double into the turn because of the top. Yep, this is, this is a point of pure saturation, and you can see off to the edge. I mean, there is, we're on a stadium floor. They do their best they can to get the water off the track, but uh, the whole outer ring is just, it's just sloppy. And the, it's, uh, I mean, they, not much you can do, but look at this too, Justin. <laughs> Even if you go into the single, this is some pretty soft stuff too. So there's no way this is into the turn because then look at look at this dude perfect set you up nice into the turn yeah your bike's not going to be upset and uh yeah sets you up nice right into the turn stick your leg out in the air a little style Right here, the corner behind us that we were talking about and the track section that we're walking on is really the right field foul pole area, right where the tunnel comes out to the pits. This always stays in the shady part. It's kind of on the southeastern portion of the stadium, so it really doesn't get much sun all day long. So this section tends to be the softer area. Coming up, kind of a standard triple right here. <laughs> <laughs> this will be interesting because the first lap of practice, you always do wheels on the ground, so you can't jump. So typically, if I was walking the track and we didn't have wheels on the ground, you'd probably just jump this triple first try. But you can't. you got to do wheels on the ground. So where are you going to go? you pretty much got to get your bike muddy before you even start practice, right? Mechanics love that. I'm sure yeah. they're take it back and have to wash it in Supercross, which they're not really necessarily used to. Hopefully, Malcolm Stewart doesn't try to pull over and <laughs> pull out you're, his fishing pole, right? You're going to see a goat trail ride over there. <laughs> Everybody just going right there <laughs> for, the, for the wheels on the ground. Yeah, by anyway. mistake, the riders are looking and going, don't follow on the left side on wheels on the ground. Yeah, this is, uh, but just kind of a standard triple. We just, uh, we had our first shoe casualty there. Good job, Shane, with the camera there. But uh, he lost the shoe in the mud hole, but he recovered quickly. <laughs> Never missed a beat. Good job, buddy. So another 180. So we go back to back 180. What's your what's your thought on one eight? Like obviously you try to get on the inside, but you the first corner you can actually set up for the second pass, and it yeah. could be a multi corner. Yeah, I, I combo. think the first lap. So when we just came down the start straight. We went through one section. Then you've got a lot of run up for the triple. Guys are going to be side by side, and you've got a nice one eighty bull burn. Guess what that sets you up for? A nice old block pass, especially on the first lap where you know if you're. Fourth or tenth, or if you got Nicoletti behind you, watch yes, out right, right. Watch out Filthy right Phil, filthy <laughs> Phil, baby. There's a block right passer. So inside? How's that club bike looking, man? Well, thank you, man. Yeah, that's one of, one of our new teams we added to the Dunlop family, Club MX, this year. So we're excited to have you Good, good, bro. Love having you guys running our tires, buddy. So, wow, well, listen. Every time, I know I'm an old school guy, but I get up on these things, I look at these jumps, I'm like, man, this is a long way. 
Yeah. Doesn't even, you don't even phase the first right. lap or what, buddy? If you well, didn't have wheels on the ground, would you oh, hit it? Oh, for sure, first lap. <laughs> but I always say things look bigger without your helmet on. Uh -huh. When you put your helmet on, you're on the motorcycle. Yep. Yeah, you, you'd hit this. You'd hit this first lap. But I will say there's not been a triple that I've walked in my career. I said, ooh, you don't want to come up short on this one. Yeah. And this one, you don't want to come up short, bro. Just yeah. look at that face. This one, if oh my short gosh. This one, it's not going to be good. Yeah, it's a, that's a long one. I know, I'm looking at them. They're side by side here. They're slightly staggered, but this one just looks longer to me, even though it's maybe only a few feet longer. Yeah. It just you looks got a long. lot of runoff, though, so I, yeah. would, I would try to hit it a little bit faster than yeah. what I would expect. Yep. Uh, just to over jump it a little bit, right? Yep. you'd rather over jump it? Yeah, I don't think you want to be uh, under jump. <laughs> so, that's it. Yeah, pretty good. I did now here with the sun. You can see the sun coming in on the track right here. It's looking pretty good, man. This is uh, this is like loam. It's almost, yeah, this is great. Over here, they almost need to wire that little section there. Yeah, but uh, this, is, this looks really well. Again, the dirt works, guys. It's incredible the hours these guys are putting in. I mean, they were here until 8, 9 o'clock at night last night working on the tractors. I saw them at 7 o'clock this morning driving into the place. So there's nobody putting any harder work than those guys. We've got kind of our first 90-degree turn. And typically, 90-degree turns, you always go inside, right? So there'll be an inside rut there where you just kind of stay on the seat, double in here. I'm not sure what's yeah. after this, but it looks like there's a double, triple. But you've got a little bit of a wet pocket. But this is a perfect situation right here where that's not going to be there tonight. This this transition is going to be great later tonight. You give it some hours with some sun. You give some guys on the track. It's going to be really good. Yeah, you can see this section off of the track. This is the team manager's tower, the AMA official's tower, etc. That is just a mess getting in there. They have put some drying age in it, hopefully suck up some of this water. But you can see, as Justin was talking about, this little transition here, clearly the tarps were, that was a seam, and a lot of water ran through here, and it's going all the way down there. So they'll keep working on this throughout the night, what's up, and uh, we'll see what's going on. Yeah, this is going to be a double, triple, huh, Brock? Yep. Double and triple into the turn. So we got uh, multi-time <clears throat> champion Ryan Dungey kind of walking through here, and he's doing a little. Are you doing a, taking care of the KJSC kids? Yeah. What's going on there? You got the little uh, wintertime brew on the face there. You got to keep yeah, it warm. Huh? Stay warm somewhere. I got it. Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> that's, even, that's even colder than well, Minneapolis, huh? Uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> it's all cold. Right yeah. yeah, exactly. The so. <laughs> only way you're staying warm is go inside. Yeah, how special is that for the KJSC kids? You know, you got Ryan Dungey leading their track walk and helping them out. That's pretty, pretty amazing. So, coming through this corner right here. We're about halfway around a lap. And we're now getting to the finish line area. So this isn't the finish of our, this is not the finish of our track. Right. You come to this corner, it's not a full 180, much more than a 90. You're coming out of that section right there. This is a bunch of places where you can do a lot of passes or you can get a run through here as you head up towards the finish line there. So, yeah, let's uh, I always say that the turn before the finish, if it's somewhat of a 180, that creates a lot of passes. Last lap. Last corner, what are you going to do for a win? Drop to <laughs> You're going to go. punch somebody else? Go on to the podium? Well, you got, said, uh, yep. I'm going to the podium and you're not? Yeah, you got the chance. To, <laughs> last transfer spot for a heat race. Yes, right? The spot. main event win, whatever it is, LCQ. And you got to, sorry, man. Uh, friend, friends back in the pits and on right. the track, you know, you don't have to be dirty, but you definitely want to get on the, you know, the, the, the purse has come up a lot this year. I think there's forty or fifty thousand dollars more purse money in Supercross, so it, it makes a big difference when you're going not only from the LCQ, but actually getting into the main event where you can start earning multiple thousands of dollars just making it into the main. So that's good on the field for. Uh, and everybody's a little bit different. You've got the guys that are walking the track right now hoping for a championship at the end of the year. You've got the guys that are just hoping for a top ten tonight. You've got the guys that are just saying, I've never qualified for a hand in my life. I just want to qualify for a man. And you've got the guys that are just saying, I want to do good and practice qualifying just to make the night show. And so there's little wins. You know, we think about the winner of the race all the time, but there's little wins going on everywhere. I just oh. got to kind of notice what's what's happening. You're so right. Like back at the truck a lot, Dunlop truck, I'll be sitting there and I'll hear someone come out of the tunnel and the guy finished fourth in the LCQ and yeah. he's, whoa, oh. and they're like, he's pumped. It's the first main event he's ever made. Maybe the second main event ever before. He's driven a long ways out here and he used that extra money to drive home. So absolutely right. Race within races all the time. So over the finish line, jump here. 
kind of your normal basic finish line jump. Nothing too special. Again, as, as Justin was saying, it always looks a little longer, but this one here is just, uh, you know, your standard jump. Make it look easy. So, one hand across. Now, a true 180 coming off to an almost 180, maybe a 150, and into yep. a full 180 again here. But after the 180, we know what's coming up. We're coming up on a big set of our first whoops. So. My, my favorite part of the track. Yeah? Yeah, my Absolutely. favorite part. Well, you were making note when we were walking on out here to do this, you were making note of the differences in the, in the actual dirt of these whoops. So can you please elaborate a little bit on that, what you saw earlier? Yeah, a little hard to see right now with everybody on them, but you'll notice the first three or four whoops are actually a lot darker color. Pulp MX right there. Big Steve. What's up, Steve? <laughs> uh, the first four whoops are really dark, which they're a lot more wet. Even if we go walk on them, they're going to be a little bit softer. So. Uh, and they're quite a bit more laid down, so I think every rider that comes here is going to say, oh, these whoops aren't going to be too bad. They're going to be a little bit ruddy, and, um, you know, a lot of guys will come out here, and this is the first section that they'll look at, because last year we had a lot of big whoops. It was a big separation for a lot of guys. And, uh, yeah, just look at the different color between this one right there and the next one. Lighter color there, darker on on the whoop that the gas gas guys are on. So this is going to be pretty soft. It's going to go away pretty quick. Imagine the Dunlop rear tire keeping <laughs> that thing up every lap. They're going to be pretty soft. So a um, little 180 turn coming into them. So you can go right, left, center. Uh, you've got a lot of options there. So uh, which I like that. I love a 180 degree turn into whoops. It gives you a lot of passing options. What gear do you think you'll be in? I mean, that's the one thing about we talk about whoops and the technique. I know it's the labor point. Talk about it quite a bit. But the fact is, the riders actually shift up. Yeah. We have to it's normal speed on a track. No, no, no. Second or third gear. Yeah, yeah. Go up second gear, third gear, fourth gear. Get on the whoops, get on the gas, and then let that wheel pick up speed between each one to kind of drive the rear of the bike down like a mini panic wreck between the whoops. Yeah, absolutely. So most 450 cars are third. Some guys are out. Um, if these were hard pack groups, some guys would be four uh, more than that. But I think with the way the soil is, going to be nice and intact. There's not going to be a lot of wheel spin. So what Brock's talking about, in between the groups, you're still wide open. So your RPMs are going to play up. If you're in second gear, you're going to rev into the moon. So you want to click third, you can play fourth. I would say 85% of the guys are going to be third gear. Tonight. Some guys may even be second to get that extra burst speed out of the turn. And then when they come second, roll hard and grab third, real quick to get it up on Yes, it. yes, absolutely. Uh, but if they become jumpers, right, think of guys like Cooper Ward. Maybe he just jumps in these things and jumps out. He would stay in second. Speaking of somebody who can ride the whoops really well, Davey Millsaps. What are you doing out here, brother? Good to see you, man. Just been walking around doing some track work. You got Dane? Walking with Dane. Dane, how are you, brother? Yeah, yeah. Dane is young Davy's son, and uh, my son's name Dane, so we always relate, relate into that. So 2013, yeah, was yeah. it? A1? Years ago. Ten years A1 ago. A1 winner? Yep, A1 winner right here, Dane. In a, in a great race with, with Trey. <laughs> I, I know you're younger than you guys. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's yeah, exactly. Well, thanks for stopping. Yeah. What are you doing, Dane? What do you think, man? Is this it for you? Is this where you're headed? All right. Yeah. One day he wants to. Okay, nice. very good. Hopefully, hopefully 2033 20, 20, is yep. one winner. How's that? Is it cool that your dad's won this race before? It's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it's, it's been cool. They've been posting it everywhere. Yeah, I know. I've seen it a lot. That's, That's nice. Very good. Well, good talking to you guys, man. Well, thanks for stopping. So, yeah, we, we head through here, and Justin was talking about how the bike, each time the rear wheel comes between, whoops, the RPMs are real high. So what that does is the wheel, with no, th no resistance, Picks up speed, again, like a mini panic rev if your front end's dropping on a jump, and it helps lower the rear of the bike, drop that rear end down, gets the wheel back on the ground, runs up the face of the next, whoops, gets a nice drive, helps keep the front end high, keeps the front end from dropping and going over the bars. So, got a little top secret HRC uh, conversation here. We Lars, might be Lars, up some hold, sort of holding us up. Holding us so up. You guys better keep it quiet because we're broadcasting. Okay. <laughs> your competition's listening. So, right here, just in this corner right here to me has a, an odd feel to it. It does, yeah. It's super tight, 
playing to the inside. If you're protecting the inside, boy, you're going to be turning up a face of a finish line jump here, an over-under jump, old school style. And, and I, I just, it seems odd welcome. to me, so A1, I'm just trying to, what line do you think would be the hot ticket? Well, I think minutes. the jump all the way is really to ride. Yep. It's not very long on top, so you only need to jump about 10 to 15 feet. So, yeah, you're just going to go right up the inside, protect your line, and ride over it, no problem. Yeah, on a modern 450, jumping a... Jumping a 20 foot tabletop at the top is nothing, huh? Yeah, it's nothing. You don't need much. But right here, speed. once our ears pop when we climb this thing, we've got a beautiful view of the whole track. And you were talking about this earlier before we started this track walk. Down here, high G force, and then right there, you got the pre whoop to help lighten the bike. The old school McGrath technique where you yeah. lighten the bike and just able to skim across the whoops. Right there. You thinking it's so extreme that you might. Be careful to not skip that big whoop. First. Well, I don't know if you can tell, but how on the on the broadcast, but this is really, really steep. Is this downside is super right. steep. Well, when you get on a steep uh, landing, you're going to hit the first whoop. Your suspension's going to going to compress, right? But well, it's going to want to unload on you, which you don't want it to unload that much because you'll miss the first whoop. So that it'll be interesting to see guys kind of labor down this a little bit or. <laughs> Good job. Good job, Shane, not going down. <laughs> that is a steep jump. It's hard to tell it's that to you. So it's you're, really what you're saying down. is you want to be really careful to not unload so much on that first one that you miss this one and kind of face plant into exactly. this one. Exactly. You want your front tire to miss this one? Right. You don't want your rear tire to miss. You okay. want to land your front tire right on the third right one? Right here. Front tire exactly. right here. There you go. Exactly. And then you're off to the races. You're, you're you're the race. yeah. Another little bit of an odd thing that I noticed we talked about earlier. The way this whoop lines up, it almost looks like, Shane, if you can focus on the first corner here, it almost looks like we're going down and going left here. But the rea reality is the track goes to the right. And uh, it does have a little bit of an angle towards the left, and then it's going to veer back. So I'm thinking this is going to be the right side will be your main groove, no question yeah. about it. So, uh, people will probably tend, the riders will tend to be on the right side. Once it gets too grooved up, they might move a little bit. But. No question, early on, the, the right-hand side is going to be the advantage. So, Justin, coming into here as a rider, you got to almost have that sixth sense, a little bit of hearing going on there, using that hearing, using some feel. But you got to have a sixth sense knowing when a guy's going to try to get underneath you because this is the ultimate block pass corner right here. This is because there's you obviously have that decent, it's about a middle length whoop section, not super short, not super long. But it's enough room to get up next to somebody, or even, you know, try to go down the right side of them. But then you have a lot of room from the last loop to the to this corner. Uh -huh. You've got a lot of room to maneuver, and guys coming up the inside, guys coming the swing. There's a lot going on right here. Yeah, it is coming off the whoops, coming into this corner, looking back. Pivot here, another one of these really ultra soft sections right here. Bottom, so that's going to be slippery, but it, it'll work in quickly. As soon as the riders get riding a few laps. Coming out of this corner, you'll be jumping this muddy swamp area, so they're not really worried about this. It's not going to be the main part of the line. Up under the table. And Justin, what do you think is the uh, what do you think the rhythm here is going to be the most common rhythm? Well, I haven't seen the end of it, but typically right now with how muddy the the entrance is before uh -huh. the first jump. You're just going to want to jump onto this tabletop yeah. and then jump off. And from what I can see so far, when you jump off, that next transition is quite big. So um, just glancing at it here, it looks like onto the table, off, triple, and then you're going to hit that tabletop and quad into the turn just like you were in the other section previously when we started. So um, that's what it looks like so far. We'll see what the transitions are like. See Shane Mavrath he's on a new team, as is Freddie Noren on the new Mad Parts, uh, Cowie, I guess riding Cowies this year. So both guys riding new bikes, new team. It was fun to see them kind of, some of these guys end up catching up with each other on the track walk. Haven't seen each other in a few months, you know, and so it's uh, a lot of a lot of friendships out here. But again, they're fierce rivals on the track. Yeah, we'll try to try to get this wrapped up for that riders meeting starts but uh, again coming into the what's now the left field 
left field foul pole corner of the stadium. We all uh, kind of familiar with this section. There's been a lot of actions that's happened this part of the, this part of the stadium over the history of this uh, Anaheim Supercross. It's always been kind of a fun one. We've seen the track go in so many different directions and, and different uh, different areas. I remember a few years ago, wasn't it, when Jet Lawrence came around here and he had a little crash right right around here, wasn't it? Or something? Yeah, he's had some. Yeah. Been some yeah. It's always this whole corner right here has always had some action there. So. Yeah, so cool. I think what I said earlier, Brock, it looks like onto the table, off triple, quad into the turn. Those transitions uh, to line up for that line, yep. they're really, really good. So, Do you think you can quad off that table? I do, yeah. yeah, yeah. Look, back, look back at what he's talking about here. Way back where the guys, the paramedics are standing on that, using that face of that jump to quad where we're standing right here. That's a... And the landing It's just so precise and, um, you know, the first time you do it, you don't know how fast you actually need to hit it. It's just experience over time to say, okay, it's similar to this jump I hit last year at such and such track. And, um, so, yeah, but this is my favorite part of the day, even as a race it's like, hey, what? What's going to be the fast line? Can we quad that? Can we triple that? Can we do that in return? Can you, you know, and you're talking to your kind of parts and you're talking to your crew and saying, what do you think? What do you think? Oh, well, I think this. Really? You want me to quad into that turn? <laughs> so, <laughs> and then the first practice is always really fun to try and figure out what, what, uh, what line's the best, right? Yeah, it's always fun when somebody, your mechanic's going, yeah, do it, do it. You're like, here, here's the bike. <laughs> here's the bike. You show me how it, you show me how it's done. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's quite interesting if somebody doesn't jump something the first practice or even the second practice, and then you go out in the, the last practice of the day and somebody quads something, you instantly got it on your pit board that next lap of, hey, Sexton or Roxton or somebody, uh, Glover, quadded that. <laughs> oh, yeah. we had, And then you got to go out and do it. Yeah, you, exactly. You have to go out and do it. If you're here to try and win the race or be on the podium yep. or even get in the top ten nowadays, yep. you've got to do all the jumps. Whether it's a big quad or not, you, you've got to go for it. You know, that that was funny you say that, but that's in the early days of Supercross. There was no question the tracks weren't designed to have an exact triple of X amount of feet. And things were not, sometimes triples weren't meant to be triples. Or quads were not meant to be quads. They were meant to be double doubles. And in practice, it would happen. Somebody would let, you know, have a video camera, sometimes capture it, sometimes not. And it wasn't like now where all the teams have, every team has a filmer. They go back, they study video, the whole deal of that. It's just totally different. It's a free for all. And of course, when somebody did a crazy thing, we always just like, oh, why did you do that? Now I got to do it. Well, now we like, the guessing game's out of it, too. Yeah. If a guy does a quad or a guy's doing a triple triple, and yep. instead of a double 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 or whatever, we've all got those ghosty systems yep. that. Say Tomac does one rhythm lane and Roxon does it a totally different way, and they're arguing about which one's better. Well, we've got the film that we're going to lay on top of each other. Yep. We're going to tell you exactly how much faster one of the ways is. Yep. And, you know, it, it takes the it's great as a rider, but it totally takes the guessing game out of it. Yeah, it's. Uh... It is. It's pretty hard to hide nowadays. You just got to get your fundamentals, just learn how to corner a little bit better and do a little more rhythm, make sure you're in good shape, get your bike set up right, and just go at it. You can't, uh, it's pretty rare if somebody gets to pull a lucky move off, and if they do, you got to kind of wait. If you think you have a quad, and we've seen many of the great champions do that, if they think they've got a quad in their book or something, they don't pull it out sometimes until the main event, and it makes a big difference. So coming into home plate right here, we're almost sliding into home on this uh, first, uh, first Dunlop Motorcycle Tires track walk of the year. Coming around this final corner here, another past champion, Trey Kennard, working with the Team Honda HRC team. And uh, coming around this last little section right here, and Justin wants to explain a little Hip jump on the yes, inside. we've got the first option where if you look on the inside, there's a single that you can jump over the big one, or you can go around the outside and you can jump off the the bigger one there. You can jump actually all the way across the start straight. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see which one turns out better as the night goes on. But this is a perfect thing where the guy doubles out. He's well, go back to the truck. Hey, which one's faster? Oh, I think the outside does. You can film guys and say, hey, which one's actually faster? So, yeah, and it's a 
also, from the inside, you might double this. And the other guy's trying to jump all the way out into the stretch right away, but you might double this, get on the inside, and go along the other side, and find the corner, 180, you're on the inside. Well, Justin, thank you so much. As we enter the track right here in the first quarter, thank you so much for joining us. And, uh, You've got a great race track. Huh? Yeah. 2018 Daytona Supercross champion, and I think you are like fifth all time. We were looking at the stats with that 190, 190 from your class Supercross. Yeah, crazy to think it's been that many. It's gone by so fast. But, uh, yeah, 190 of these things. So I've seen a couple of tracks in my day, as you have. So. But they're all so much different over the years that it gets me excited to go out and each and every track. Hey, you think you would, what, do you ever consider throwing your leg over a couple more main events, maybe at Daytona? Because if you do, you tie Nick away for you know, yeah. 192 all the time for fourth place. Huh? I mean, if you would ask me a month or two ago, I said, absolutely not with being here. You know, smelling the dirt, getting around with friends, and, and this is like a family to all of us, right? We've been around for so long. Uh, I think it's the right opportunity that came up. Who knows, maybe throw my leg over for uh, first year. I heard we'll that. See. I see. heard that. We've got it on tape, too. So, hey, maybe we can see Justin Brady. It'd be great to see it. Like, I can get some tires, right? Yeah, well, I can yeah, hook you up on the tires. We'll get you one of them MX-14 for Daytona. You can nice. throw the metal tire on the yeah. tire. Yeah. So I'd love to see you back out there. So, after what we saw in Paris from you, we were on the podium, competitive with the champions last year. And all the guys, you know, you're running with Tom Mack, and you're rocking over there. I know you got some features. Yeah, the speed's not going to crush this. This 17 of these, and I think it's like so few of us in our days where, you know, to do the full off-season prep with the free kids, it gets harder and harder. So to do a few, to get some guys prep in for that, I think is doable. But to do all 17 is just so fun. What does that mean, though? It's so I think about it now, I might, I might be like 80 